Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Government Secrets with Lee Cap and Graham Elwood, episode 7. <laughs> Bad from Twitter for 12 hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I've always been impressed we were able to hire that announcer who does the opening. He's great. He's and great. I think he's great. He's, told he's always five minutes late, so it's really kind of... I don't, right. That's why I'm late, because he's right. late. I would be right. on time, but he's always like got to get his... Pow, 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 noises like it takes him time to warm i don't know i don't know how he does it i heard he has to have a belly full of turkey gravy to do that noise <laughs> so that must be what it is <laughs> i saw belly full of turkey gravy at coachella in i want to say 2013 <laughs> oh unbelievable there was micro dosing did I don't you remember. see them though after uh gravy overdosed so they were just belly full uh, of turkey yeah it, it was the never the same no. never the same it was just it was just, yeah, it was just belly full of turkey. It was like really, it was weird. And I tried, I really wanted to, but I yeah. just, I just, no, couldn't. I gave, I gave it a chance. I, oh, I gave it a chance. I gave belly full of tur turkey a chance, but I was like, you know, gravy made the band. Gravy made the band. Yeah. I mean, when the keyboardist started his own thing and that, that I was more down with because that was just separate, but it just, that was like colon full of cheesecake, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Which was a completely different sound. Colon full yeah, of cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> but you know at least he was he was going his own way at least well yeah because it was like we all wanted it to be with gravy and it wasn't so it was like <laughs> when you so when you went to colon full of cheesecake you're just like this is a new thing with an artist i like and so you were more i think we were all more open we just so wanted and then he did he did that re, they did that reunion uh it was like cheesecake turkey gravy and i i don't know Reunion shows are always tough. They're always they're tough. Always, yeah. They're always yeah. tough. Like yeah. a, a couple of years from now, when we do a government secrets reunion tour, it's going to be really tough. I want to. I want to hear from the people who tuned in like one minute ago. Yeah, they're going to be like, <laughs> "What is this? This is really <laughs> like, like, what the fuck is this? A new WikiLeaks? I got to look this up." <laughs> Turkey gravy, ten thousand document dump. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had a 10,000 document dump this morning. I felt pretty good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> LeeCamp.com, ladies and gentlemen, for some colon humor. Um, <laughs> all right. So, do should you we, want should we should we do like five minutes on the uh, the convention of uh, love and hope from this uh, week? <laughs> you mean the convention that brought on a bunch of Republican warmongers? Is that the convention you're talking about? That yeah, I know. I, I, that, that was their way of selling themselves to America. They were like, listen, America, if you're not into us, you know, if we're not war criminal enough, we have Republicans for you. So <laughs> like, there you go. It's it's the insanity. It's like when the right wing, when Obama was in office and like he could have come up with a cure for cancer and they would have been mad about it. Right. Like just, this is the problem with the bipartisan country is that there's these, this, these two sides. And you know, if Trump, like he's, they're mad at him because he's, he hasn't increased the number of countries that we're bombing. Like that's literally what they're mad at. Like yeah, when yeah. they want, when Bush was in office and the wars and the wars, Obama ran on ending the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's what he ran on. That's why I and many others voted for him was he was going to end these wars. And when he took us from two to seven, nobody cared. And then when Trump even said, just, just said it, we've talked about it before in the show. Anytime he hints at ending a war, something crazy happens when he's like, I think I'm going to pull us out of Syria. Then all of a sudden people like liberals are like, Oh, he's going to destabilize the region. Yeah. There, there, there's a million reasons to hate Trump. And I, you yeah. know, I agree with most of them, but the actual reason that they, that they want him out in a way they've never wanted a president out before. Like, like, you know, they talk about how Obama coming forward and giving that speech where he's like, Hey, the current president in office is dangerous is incredibly rare. That's not how this system normally works. That's not what we've seen in the past from a former president. Uh, and, but the, the, the real reason that happened, the reason they are, they are doing this in a way they never have before is because of like the, the you know that when he said he was going to create peace with North Korea or the fact that even though he's put far more sanctions on Russia than Obama did that's not uh belligerent enough towards Russia so 
the the real reason they want him out and they desperately the establishment definitely outside of trump the establishment des desperately wants him out is for those reasons now the other reasons that they tell us that he is a fascist and a racist and all those things are true but those are not the things that really made them draw the line yeah oh no it's 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 look uh, if you get rid of these boogeymen north korea and russia then what like they can't have that like we really like it's it's unbelievable like but north korea yeah north korea has tried to back channel peace with two or three presidents i think now they've tried to back channel peace and we were like we won't do it because we need they they're they're starving their country is starving if we went to them yeah go, kim jong un is crazy yeah of course and the 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 Saudi royal family, they're a bunch of stable, nice people that chop up journalists and treat women like dogs. Like those folks we're okay with because they buy our weapons and they give us their oil. Like it, it, it just, it doesn't hold any water. And it's like, do you, and, and don't you want, when, when, when Trump like a year or two ago went to Russia and everyone's like, ah, he's just giving, you know, it's all hand jobs in the Kremlin or whatever they were saying, you know, it was, I was like, I, there's so much about Trump I don't like. There's stuff about Putin I can't say I'm a huge fan of. But when two the two countries that can destroy life on planet Earth in an atomic war are talking peace, I'm okay with that. Are you? I mean, do you yeah. want to blow Russia up and end life on planet Earth just to say, see, like I don't get it. R right. It's it's like there are so many disgusting leaders around the world and. We meet with most of them. And right. when we meet with or or are friends with them, we give we give aid to 70% of dictatorships around this world. But when we meet them, that's a good thing. Even if we despise them, even if we even if they are legitimately which America has never done this, but even if we legitimately, I mean, at least not since maybe World War II, even if we legitimately wanted to stop a uh, a country because they were just harming their people like legitimately wanted to do that i would like for them to meet with that leader and try and come right. with some sort of diplomacy some sort of effort to like let's discuss what's going on here and stop it so the idea that meeting with someone is like oh my dear god he met with someone is like so ridiculous i mean obama met Putin. Hillary's been photographed with Putin. It's so fucking ridiculous that they're like, he met, he talked to the guy. Like, oh God, I mean, Bill Clinton was paid somewhere in the neighborhood of a half a million dollars by a bank with ties to the Kremlin to speak there. Like, I mean, the the, the, the Uranium One deal. Like, it, it I, I can't even, everyone has met with with world leaders like it, it's rex it's, tillerson the former head of exxon got the gold star of whatever they call it you know freedom or some shit from from russia like right this is not this has been going and that was not under trump that was way back under i don't know it was either bush or clinton or something so this is nothing unusual for countries to like like these are i i mean and 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 these are like capital. The reason they they have been friendly with Russia until recently, until the past few years, is because these are capitalist countries agreeing with each other to have diplomacy. Like right, the 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 countries they truly in the past traditionally have hated and and wanted and don't won't meet with them or anything are the socialist countries. So they're you know not going to meet with Fidel Castro or something right. like. I know he's dead now, but my my point is like. The, the true ones that they're like, we won't even speak to them. It's just because they're socialist. It's because they house the homeless. Yeah. And, 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 and to that point, so we didn't have a problem. I mean, in 2012, Obama said and a debate after Mitt Romney was like, rah, Russia, Russia. And, and Obama said in a debate, the 1980s call that wants its foreign policy back. Yep. And it's like, the Democrats were just like, oh, let go of that old 80s Reagan era scared I'd, of the Soviet Union. I'd love to find the clip of, I believe it was Rachel Maddow and some of those others on MSNBC talking about Romney, who had said Russia was our greatest threat, and them just chuckling and going like, Russia? Uh, sorry, it's not 1990 anymore. Right. Like, and, they, and and in the the like a moment they were told, hey, here's what we're doing, guys. Hey, it's all anti-Russia propaganda. Okay, did you, did you get the memos? Yet? Print out enough copies so everyone knows 
we're doing the anti-Russia thing again. And within, you know, a fucking matter of weeks, it's all anti-Russian. It's like, what happened to that was the 1980s. And, and like, it's so, it's so maddening to watch. Back to the convention. So Colin Powell, who lied, helped lie us in to this illegal war in Iraq, is now being heralded by the Democrat. It just shows you, like, the Democratic Party is now the Republican Party. Right. And They're the Republican absolutely. The, the traditional Republican Party is now the Democrat Party, and the Republican Party of Trump is whatever's right of the traditional Republican Party. Yeah, just fascist greed, oligarchy, out of control capitalism with a tanning salon and cocaine. Like, just insane, whatever crazy. Those are diet pills. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> My doctor says I need to go to a tanning salon uh, after I molest somebody. So this is how we're going to conduct our business here. Was I eat Wendy's I, in the White House? I picture Trump, you know, because he's all anti-alcohol and cocaine and everything. I picture Trump just like someone walks in the office and he's just snorting lines of like the powdered bones of his victims. <laughs> and he's like, it's not cocaine. All right. That's I people who do drugs disgust me. This is the bones of my victims. I'm not a weirdo. I just <laughs> have a certain diet. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is doctor ordered bone snorting. That's what this is. Doctor ordered um, victim bones. <laughs> 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 so obviously, I mean, Hillary Clinton has spoken at the convention, like, and the vote any blue will do crowd. I mean, they are America gets this government that they deserve. They get it. They deserve it. The, the, the vote any blue will do crowd will not hold the Democratic Party accountable. They will not do it. And they're the problem. Like, how, how do you how do you watch the I mean, I barely could watch any of this convention. I literally had to watch clips. And even those I was like, oh, yeah, no, I only watched I only watched clips and on redacted tonight, which is airing in a half an hour or something. I just covered like. I just covered clips from them because I couldn't, I tried to, you know, Marion Williamson, who all of a sudden is spitting fire uh, because she's, once you're out, you can, <laughs> you can begin spitting fire. Uh, she was, she, she had the perfect line. She was like, she, cause, cause some other celebrity was like, isn't it great to see the DNC? It's so wholesome. And there's oh. just a lot of kindliness involved. And Marion Williams is like, no, it's garbage. It's like watching a, a two hour long Marriott ad. <laughs> and i was like oh that's perfect it so is it's just it like is. look here's a black person saying something that means nothing it's un but like give and the thing is like trump is so beatable on policy on his failed policies on his platforms if you had like a lefty populist progressive you could say oh he got rid of the pandemic task force 2 years ago that's killing us if we had free health care we we would be dealing with this pandemic uh, better if we had student debt forgiveness rather than giving the 1.5 trillion dollars which is the exact amount of student debt forgiveness instead he gave it tax breaks to his billionaire buddies you could go on down the line but you all of those things are actually good for you know the, the Democrats make money off of war and for-profit health care and, you know, for-profit prisons and all that. So they can't call him out on the things that he's so beatable on. Right, right. Uh, it's, it, it, they, and, they, and they also want Joe Biden, even if Joe Biden were to put forward some sort of new health care policy that is slightly better or something, they don't want to talk about that much because they're trying to be everything to everyone. So they want right wingers to think that Joe Biden speaks for them and they want progressives to think that Joe Biden speaks for them. And and so they're they're just saying nothing. I mean, even the even the slight things they've put on the platform or claim they were going to put on, they keep like then taking it down off his website and then someone notices and calls him on it and then they put it back up for a day and then take it down again. I mean, like all these things, like he claimed he wasn't going to have any, uh, you, you know, any, uh, t t you know, uh, uh, cuts to to save the safety net and everything. And then they that that was taken down off the site or whatever. Like they just keep 
they they're, they don't want him to have any platform stances. They want him to just be the great mystery man that everyone can believe. Hey, just believe he's whatever you want him to be because we fucking don't know what he is. Well, and here's what they'll do. If he does get in the White House, he'll go, he'll go, I saved Roe v. Wade. I saved Obamacare. And everyone will go, yay. And it's just like- by, Just by showing up. Just by showing up. It's like he won't, he won't do anything new that'll help. He won't. It's it's just like and and the economy will nosedive, and he will just give more stimulus money mainly to Wall Street because that's who put him in power. So, and, and I you know I will say this you know Trump is an idiot criminal, and you know it would be fun to see him do some sort of perp walk at some point. Like you know it'd be fun to see Steve Bannon go away if he ends up getting imprisoned for his latest con game where he got people to donate to self-fund the wall, building a wall at the southern border, which, you know, it'd be fun to watch Bannon in jail, but I will say, if you fucking donate to build a wall, like, yourself at the southern, around America, like, and it gets stolen from you, you fucking deserved it, all right? I you, have as much you, sympathy for those people as I do for the people that paid for the Fry Festival, the Fire Festival. I've got the same <laughs> level of like, oh, <laughs> fucking prayers. Oh like, my God. Steve Bannon and Ja Rule should run for president together. That'd be, that'd be amazing. The border wall is the fry, the fire festival. Fire of festival of, of foreign policy. <laughs> <Of> foreign policy. <laughs> <laughs> Trump is really the fire festival. Oh my God. Trump is a dumpster fire festival. That's what he is. He really is. And <laughs> you can get front row tickets for 10 grand and you don't have to wear a mask because you're not going to die from COVID. Herman Cain was just weak. <laughs> he was a Wait, quitter. Ben, ben Carson or Herman Cain? Oh, whatever. One of those guys died. Wait, well, I think it was. Him. I think it was Ben Carson died. Oh, Herman. Yeah, Ben Carson. <laughs> um, I don't care. Some dummy died because he went to a rally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Well, one, one of the three black men Republicans who, who are who are dumb enough to be both uh, not white and a Republican. But. Right. It's like it, 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 the thing I'm, I'm going to miss about the traditional conventions is the con with, with an, you know, in an, in an arena with an audience is I loved for a whole week watching the Republican convention where the cameras would cut to the same four the only four black people in the arena just, just, so they just it, was, it was just diamond and diamond and silk and they just have them move from chair to chair so it looked like more than one of them. <laughs> And they find one guy up in the stand. Oh, see, look at the diversity of the Republican Party. It's like, oh boy, you guys. <laughs> it's like it's like when you watch a rom com with an all white cast, and there's always a black extra at the wedding. You know what I mean? It's like that. <laughs> oh, oh, it's black extra. Oh, okay, great. Thank you, black extra. White Hollywood has bequeathed you uh, sixty dollars a day for three days. From uh, it's great. <laughs> Hey everyone, great ways to support the show are go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, where you get bonus content for as little as $2 a month, or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. That's the future. Also, GrahamElwood.com, where all my merchandise is on sale and ships exclusively with the United States Post Office, like my Vigilant T Volume 2, The Dark Knight. We only made 50 of them. They're going fast. Go to GrahamElwood.com. To support the show. I'm on Venmo and PayPal, P.O. Box, all of that, GrahamElwood.com.